Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a lesson going into provision. All right. And um, this is a word that Elder Ariala, you know, always brings up. And uh, I've been meditating on it, you know, uh, this week. And as you see, I have it here on Etymology Online. Provision, which is what? Foresight, prudence, care. All right. Also a providing beforehand. Action of arranging in advance, you know, which the hopeful elect, you know, are hoping to be of that number, which were foreordained to be delivered, foreordained to get the victory over the beast, you know, his image, his mark and everything he's coming with. You know, that was a blessing. All right. That was um, given to the elect before there was even an earth. All right. So the heavenly father. All right, has provision provided for his elect. Now, the aspect I want to deal with, you know, as um dealing with provision is the fact that the elect aren't going to starve as we've been prophesying about food shortages, you know, um, prophesying about uh, perplexity, which is a lack of resources, prophesying about how the devil is hoarding all of the uh, Earth's resources to himself. Uh, he's creating all of these Frankenstein foods. He's even putting the uh, the VAX, all right, you know, or plans, or ha has boasted in putting the VAX in plants, in meat, in foods for the people who don't want to um, go and roll up their sleeve. You see. And, you know, hearing all of this, you know, can put you sometimes in the spirit of what if and put a spirit of doubt on you. All right. But the beautiful thing about everything that's happening. All right. Is that the Heavenly Father already has provision for the elect. OK. When we speak about things like uh, famine, you know, as we always bring this out here in the book of uh, Sirach, the 40th chapter. In the ninth verse, it says, Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. See, we all right, are praying to be in the stead of Noah, who found grace in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Okay, which pretty much the Lord put a spirit on him okay to um build an ark you know which would be the uh vessel that would save him all right his sons and all of their wives you see and here in this this time you know we're constantly prophesying about you know the food shortages the famine all right but those things are created for the wicked all right, of our people and these wicked people in this world. The Lord didn't prophesy of the elect to starve out. You see, because somebody has to be here to be delivered. Now, we do know some of the elect will be beheaded. All right. And that's ultimately a, a good thing. You know, the scripture says precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. So if you happen to have to take a death for righteousness sake, you know, for speaking the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and not bowing the knee to the image of Baal, that's not a loss. All right. And the beauty of it is we now understand that there really isn't a such thing as death. As the flesh returns, you know, to the earth and the spirit returns back to the heavenly father who gave it. You know, so there's really no way to lose if you're of the elect. And this is why the scriptures say put therefore on the elect, you see. And, and, and renew your mind into a new man and change your thinking, your, your, your expectation, your faith. It all must be upgraded in order to get through what's coming. All right. Because there's no way to physically prepare, you know, 
some brothers, you know, sometimes you get extra canned goods, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you know a famine is coming, there's nothing wrong with having extra, but that's not where your faith lies, you know, and what if you're not around those particular foods that you saved up when everything goes down and you're not able to get to it, all right, then you're going to have to rely on your Hawabashim Yahushai, and that may very well be the case for a lot of us, and everybody's going to be in different situations. The Lord has already foreordained what situation each soul is going to be in, okay, that is foreordained for deliverance, you see, but when we deal with this uh, thing called provision, okay, as you see here, provision to supply with things necessary, especially a store of food, okay, so the Heavenly Father, okay, has provided beforehand, okay, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, okay, especially in the times of trouble, all right, and the scripture I love to uh, go into that speaks on this aspect is right here in the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter, and I'll start at the fifth verse. As you can see, the third seal is dealing with famine, and these are things that play out on the earth. Now, this is Revelation 6 and 5. It says, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, lo, a black horse, and him that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And we always show you this word, balances, okay? Because this is uh, Esau's rulership, the red horse, and this is what issued forth from his rulership, okay? And that word is zygos, okay? Strong's G, 2218, Zugas. Zugas. All right, Zugas. All right, or like it says here, Zygos. But pretty much it's a yoke. A yoke that is put on draught cattle, metaphorically used of any burden or bondage. And that's what the Heavenly Father has put the spirit on this devil to do in these latter days. All right, he set up a prison planet. Okay, and he's going to uh, take it uh, uh, even further. Okay, and he's going to use the earth's resources as a means to push another kind of bondage via his haragma and everything else he has planned. And that of slavery, of troublesome laws imposed on one. Okay, and those troublesome laws are described, all right, as unrighteous decrees, all right, as him you know, having two horns um, like a lamb, you know, coming as if he's, you know, there to help you, but speaking as a, a dragon, which that dragon, Draco, goes back to draconian measures or harsh laws being imposed on the people, all right, for the sake of the ruler getting done what he wants done, okay, and those harsh laws are getting ready to be passed. So hearing all of these things and, and seeing, you know, where the earth is headed, it could put you in a state of anxiety with worry, okay, on how are we going to eat. Now, we push, all right, to uh, build your faith, to believe in what the scriptures say. That's why the scriptures say real quick. Let's get that in uh, the book of Thessalonians. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7. And to you who are troubled, all right, which the Israelites are troubled. All right, everybody's troubled, but the Israelites are in the most trouble. Okay, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. This is why we're telling you to rest with us. Stop leaning on this devil and lean on Yahweh Bashim Yahushai because he has provision prepared for those who trust in him, man. And that's what I want to get into in this lesson. All right, it says... To you who are troubled, rest with us. And where do you rest? In the sure word of prophecy. When the Lord Yahweh Shah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. All right. Let's get this in the book of Peter. This is the book of first, Second Peter 1 and 19. It says, we have also a sh more sure word of prophecy. You see, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. All right, so you have to believe in the value of the book. All right, these things are sure. These things are faithful. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein too 
ye do well that ye take heed. See, you take heed to the things that are written in this book. Okay, the scriptures talks about how, you know, um, what we see before us doesn't move us. Okay, we understand that all of these things are temporal. See, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to take this devil down. Okay, if you think in the back of your head that the Heavenly Father is going to allow this devil to just swallow us all up, then you're of little faith and you need to pray for more faith. Okay, this devil is not getting ready to win after all of the evil and wickedness he's put out into the planet Earth. He's getting ready to be taken down. He's getting ready to be uh, uh, shocked with the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai as he's been set up as the modern day Pharaoh and he's waxed proud. Okay, and when you go into prophecy, he doesn't win. All right, now when you go into prophecy, he does lose his mind. He does. You know, uh, try to bring about his new world order. He does, you know, bring about famine. He does bring a lot of death. All right. But again, those things are only prepared for the wicked. Starving to death, you know, being destroyed in these wars. OK, being perplexed and, and, and often yourself. All of those things are going to happen. But again, as we read, those things are prepared for the wicked. You see, we are pushing uh, uh, the, the mentality of victory because the Lord has provision already prepared for the elect in these times that we're going unto. All right. Now, um, to finish this point in the book of Revelation, Revelation six and six, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny. All right. Meaning you're not going to be able to get but so many resources. All right. For so much money. And this is not an actual penny. When you look this up, this is dealing with the Roman denarian. Okay, again, these are the times that are coming into the planet Earth. All right, a measure of wheat for a penny. The word measure is coinix. Okay, and what does it say? Or as much as would support a man of moderate appetite for a day. So you're going to be able to, to, to get food. But what system are you going to have to enter into to get that food? Plus... OK, again, it's going to be rationing, food rationing. OK, as we're already living through times of inflation, it's taking more dollars to get less food. OK, but this word penny is denarion, denarion. You can look up the Roman denarius and how it was devalued, you know, and tie it to the dollar. Another aspect of how this is the modern day Rome, but denarius means containing tin, a Roman silver coin. OK. And to just jump to the point, it says it would seem that the denarius was then an ordinary uh, pay for a day's wages. So a day's wages will get you, all right, enough food for a man of a moderate appetite. And moderate means you don't eat much. So we're going to be in some crazy times in the planet Earth. All right. But the Lord says something very, very uh, important through John here that I, I want to focus on. It says, and I heard. A voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All right. And the aspect of the oil and wine is the elect this truth. All right. Meaning this devil is not going to, uh, you know, no matter how far he goes. All right. The heavenly father has set up. Let's get that in the book of Romans, the seventh chapter or the eleventh chapter. OK, the Lord has foreordained those who were chosen not to bow the knee to the image of Baal. This is the book of Romans 11 and four. But what said the answer of the most high unto him? Speaking about Elijah, I have reserved to myself seven thousand men, which is symbolic of the elect. OK, the one hundred and forty four thousand. All right. The men of the Lord who are going to have the message. All right. That the rest of our people who uh, were foreordained to hear this message. All right. They're going to hear that message, as it says in um, Psalms 40 and three. The Lord have put a new song in my mouth and many shall hear it and fear Yahweh Bashim Shai. OK, that's going to be through the message of the men of the Lord. All right. Who are implemented with the spirit not to bow the knee all right who have not bowed the knee 
to the image of Baal, and even so at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. See, there's a remnant, all right, who have already been elected for this grace period to get the victory and be entered into the new covenant. Okay, when you read the scriptures about the, the Yahweh Shai returning to deliver the elect from the four corners of the earth, that means people are going to have to be alive. Israelites that are of that number are going to have to be alive and on the earth. Meaning that through this famine and through everything that's getting ready to happen on the planet earth, the Lord said, what? Hurt not the oil and the wine. And, and this truth is likened unto oil and wine. Let's get that in the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Okay. This is the book of Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. All right. And that wine and milk is symbolic of the scriptures. And we know there's various scriptures, all right, that compare the Holy Spirit and anointing to oil. You see, so the, the, the oil and the wine, all right, aren't going to be hurt, aren't going to be destroyed. Although this devil is going to do everything in his power to destroy those things. Now, I wanted to bring out this example of provision in the book of First uh, Kings 17 and 1. And then I'll get some other precepts. All right, because we do all of these videos going into the doom and gloom. All right, but we must also build up the elect, all right, with the uh, proper tools, all right, to build their faith, all right, because everything that the Heavenly Father prophesied through his prophets came to pass, how much more the victory, okay, how much more, all right, the, the, the scriptures we're going to get into as we read uh, uh, in this lesson, my servant shall eat, okay, this is the book. Of first Kings 17 and 1 and Elijah the Tishbite who was uh, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab as Yahweh the God of Israel liveth before whom I stand there shall not be dew nor rain these three years but according to my word so here it is Elijah is prophesying a famine Okay, when we go out to the highways and the byways, we're prophesying of famine. You see, we're prophesying of hard times. You see? <laughs> and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook, all right, uh, Cherith, that is before Jordan. All right, and we know brook is a stream of water. You see? So the Lord put the spirit on him. To do what? To go by this particular brook. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Okay, so as the Lord used Elijah to prophesy a famine, he's also putting him in position to have what? Water and food, which are things necessary to be alive as we're in this flesh. Okay? Now, there's going to be times we're going to have to go without, right? We understand that. But the Heavenly Father is not going to forsake the elect, man. You see, as, as, as the scriptures say, the Lord is not uh, to forget. I forget how it goes. Uh, to forget your works. I believe it's in the book of Hebrews. God is not unrighteous. Um <laughs> A second here yep hebrews 6 and 10 for god is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love but that has to be in sincerity and truth this is why we tell you you can't be a nigga okay you have to constantly improve yourself you got to offer up the right sacrifice as the apostle Gabar did a video the other day the the uh, the, the the sacrifice must be a sweet smelling savor okay Good works smell good to the Most High, all right, through Yahweh Shai, it says, because Yahweh Shai offers up the prayers and the works of the saints. It makes intercession for us. He's our lawyer in the heavens, 
So God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name for you brothers and sisters that are wholeheartedly repenting. All right. Yeah, we have our folly. All right. But in sincerity and truth, you really wholeheartedly believe. All right. The words that are coming from Yahweh Bashim Yahashah through the prophets. Okay. As well as as, as well as, uh, you know, the prophets Yahweh Shai prayed for the ones he sent. He also prayed in John, the 17th chapter, for those who believed on his message. You see, through the men he sent. So again, the Lord is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. All right. And this is a labor of love. All right. In a, in a, in a, in a great uh, form of servitude that the men of the Lord are showing. Okay, so the Lord, let's put this in the NLT. Um, in goodness gracious, Salakia. This is a uh, First Kings seventeen. All right, and four. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. All right, and this is far out. All right, and, and ravens are, are very, very, very smart. Okay, look up the uh, the intelligence of ravens. So it's not far fetched that the heavenly Father used a raven to bring uh, Elijah food. Okay, and these are the, the these are the good works that are written in the holy scriptures that we have to tap into. But we're living in a time where you have Israelite camps telling you that there's no such thing as miracles. When you're going to need a miracle to be delivered out of everything that's coming. And the miracle is written about. That's why the scriptures say to you who are troubled, rest with us. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside uh, Kareth, uh Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening. And he drank from the brook. See, he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up and there was no rainfall anywhere in the land, meaning there was what? A famine. That famine he prophesied, all right, intensified as the, pro the, 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 the prophecies that we're out, you know, speaking are going to intensify. Again, we always say you have to prepare for the comforts you have to be taken away. Right. But the Lord is not going to forsake us. You see? We don't tell you these things to, you know, to burden you and trouble you. We tell you these things, all right, so that you prepare, all right, and and, and pretty much you you're not you with the, you you don't have any excuse, all right, but to fear the Lord and do what's right and choose Yahweh Bashim Yahushai when these things come up on you. You will warn. That's what the prophets are here to do: warn, forewarn, before warn. But what we're talking about here is the Lord before, all right, allowing provision. Before, all right, having what? Mercy prepared and situations set up to where you're going to win. All you have to do is just walk and trust, all right, in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, when the call comes. Okay, again, all right, <laughs> um, provision, uh, foresight, prudence, care, all right? And it's not like we're relying on another man. We're relying on Yahweh, all right, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Foresight, prudence, care, all right? A providing beforehand, you see? Action of arranging in advance. Now, that's not to say the Heavenly Father ain't going to use particular brothers, all right, and believers to come through for you at that time, all right? But it is Him. That has already set these situations in place. All we have to do is live it out. And here's an example right here. Because when, when that brook dried up. All right. When you read verse 8. The Lord said to Elijah. Go and live in the village of Z uh, Zarephath. Near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. Meaning he already put the spirit on her. Okay. To feed him. Okay? Meaning the Lord has already foreordained this 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 situation where these two are gonna meet and she's gonna uh, uh have food and the Lord is gonna use him to work a miracle. These are the things that's coming, 
all right, in our time, this type of power, okay? So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks. See? And he asked her, would you bring, uh, please bring me a little water and a cup? He was thirsty, you see? Now, you know, from the time of him leaving, you know, that brook to this time, we don't know how long it was. All right. But for him to see her and the first thing he, he, he does is ask for water. <laughs> All right. I mean, he was thirsty. OK. So you do need to prepare yourself, you know, uh, to, to, to know how to go without. That's where fasting and prayer goes in. But that's between you and your how about you, shy. OK. And Lord willing, the Lord puts the spirit on us in that time because this flesh is weak. All right. It says. And she was going to get and as she was going to get it, he called her. All right. To bring me a bite of bread, too. All right. <laughs> but she said, I swear by the Lord, your God, that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in a jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of a jug. See, these are the times we're coming into. OK. That is going to be a famine in the land. OK. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. Then my son and I will die. She was preparing her right to cook this last meal and, and, and then eventually just starve to death. Right. But Elijah said unto her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what I've uh, what you said, but make a little bread for me first. <laughs> Elijah was hungry. All right. And the heavenly father put the spirit on her. All right. To be receptive of him. A again, what did the Lord say? I have instructed a widow there to feed you. All right. Let's look up this word. Let's go to the King James real quick. I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. Let's read it in, in the King James. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. All right. The word commanded is uh, Tazawa. All right. Tazawa to command, to charge, to give orders. And this order was given before the foundation of the earth. You see? <laughs> and that woman is back here in these times. All right. Uh, the, 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 you know, and the Lord may put her in position again to help particular men of the Lord. Who knows? But there's a reward coming to those who even give the servants of Yahweh Bashim Shai a cup to drink. The scriptures talks about a prophet's reward. This lady is going to get a reward. Let's get that as a matter of fact real quick. Okay. I believe that's in uh Matthew the twenty fifth chapter. Let's see here. Matthew Prophet Reward. Okay, Matthew ten. Matthew 10 and 41, he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. All right. Meaning you, you, you helped this particular prophet. All right. Because you've, because the words that uh, the Lord spoke through him, through Yahweh Shai, you received it as if it was the, from the Lord. All right. You, you believed it was from the Lord. You believed in the power of the message that came from him. So you're receiving him as a, a true prophet of Yahweh Bashim Shai. All right. You're going to get a righteous man's reward. Okay. You're going to get a prophet's reward. Now, what does that mean? When the 144,000 is set up. All right. Of that large multitude, there's going to be a lot of men, women, and children who are going to be set up nicely under Yahweh Shai and the 144,000 with the 12 at the head of that. All right. As we go out. All right. First, we're going to part inheritance amongst the 12 tribes here. 
all right, uh, uh, when we get to Jerusalem, okay, um, amongst the uh, promised land, okay, we're going to be delivered, all right, and eventually we're going to be returned to our land. All of the prophecies talks about that, right? So when we get there, all right, what is what, what's going to happen? All right, it's good. first of all, we know that land has to be cleaned up, all right, but we're going to part inheritance amongst the 12 tribes because that is a promised land that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his 12 sons, all right, which you can uh, see the order of how that's going to be uh, 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 split in Revelation, the seventh chapter, okay? But then some of the large multitude are going to be set up nice there, and then we're going to go throughout the whole entire planet Earth, okay? So, verse 42, and whoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple verily i say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward meaning you're you're seeing the work and labor that this disciple all right is uh putting up the hell he's catching okay and you want to help the man right by giving him a cup of cold water which can come in, in, you know, merely prayer itself. But, you know, you got brothers and sisters that, you know, are helping, you know, the prophets out. And I want to say the water, all right, to you brothers and you sisters who have given anything, man, even whether it's a penny, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, garments, you know, uh, you know, money, you know, salves, you know, teas, whatever it is you're sending the, the 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 men of the Lord, man, we sincerely, you know, wish blessings and, and and pray for blessings and you know mercy upon you and your household. The water for that, all right, because you didn't have to do it. But again, we're reading it here, all right, that those who do things like that are going to get a reward. Again, we 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 talked about how Yahweh Shai didn't just pray for uh, the uh, the teachers. In John 17. Okay, let's get that. John, the 17th chapter, the high priestly prayer. Read this chapter. It's beautiful. Okay. Um, he prayed for the men he sent out into the world to teach this word because he knew it would be hell. Okay, now it, it was the actual 11, you know, disciples because Judas was gone at this time. All right. And then we know uh, the 12th was added, but this is. In spirit, speaking of the 144,000 who have the new song, who were foreordained to have this message to preach into the world. You see? So he didn't just pray for those. As a matter of fact, let me just read that part. John 17 and 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and thou and they have received them, and they have known surely that I am come out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Okay, I pray for them. I pray for, not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, the first fruit spirits, and all are mine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. See, I am no more in the world. Because he's getting ready to return back to the right hand side, which he's there now, living forever more. Okay. But these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. See? Keep them. Okay? Keep through thine own word, thine own name. See? And in order for the elect to be kept, they're going to have to eat, drink, and be alive, okay, <laughs> for that great deliverance, all right? And in these times, for the word to go out, okay? Let's look up this word, keep. Salakia. Okay. Strong's G, 5083, Tejeo, Tejeo. To attend to carefully, take care of, to guard, metaphorically to keep one in the state of which he is, to observe, to reserve. And that's keeping them in the mindset of belief in this truth. Okay? But that comes with a blessing. Okay? 
to be kept in times of tribulation, man. You see, as we're getting ready to be delivered. All right. Into the, 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 the second covenant, man. Out of this grace period where we've done and offered up the works of righteousness, man. So Yahweh Shah is praying for his men. But then what happens in verse 20? Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which believe on me through their word. See that? Anyway, going back. All right. To this uh, word, because the Lord said he would command a woman to help Elijah. OK, he gave charge to her. OK. He ordered her. He commanded her. He appointed her. He ordained. It was a divine act. He ordained her. It was a divine act from the foundation of the earth. He chose this woman for this moment. Okay. To what? Sustain thee. To sustain Elijah. Let's look up the word sustain. See? So if we're not sustained in the time of famine, what does that mean? We just all die. That's not prophecy that the elect are just going to all die. You see? The word is kawab. All right? To seize, uh, contain, measure, calculate, to sustain, to support, to nourish. All right? To nourish, to be supplied. Okay? To be supplied. So within this time of famine Elijah was supplied okay he was supplied with what he needed okay so let's go back and finish the story let's see here first Kings 17 and 13 but Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. <laughs> then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what Yahweh, the God of Israel says, there will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and crops. All right. To grow again. Okay. And, the, and, and this is spiritual, okay? Because let's get the book of James, the fifth chapter. And this is the spirit because I was uh, reading the book of Psalms 111 and a precept, all right, came. And I'll read the precept, you know, as we get into this lesson. And, I, you know, I was like, huh, I need some precepts to go with this. All right. And then immediately I get on the phone and the uh, priest Tazama sends. All right. Uh, this first King 17, uh, James five and a few other scriptures, uh, uh, you know, speaking on how the Lord is going to keep this truth into the earth, man. He's going to have provision for us. So immediately I was like, I got to do this lesson, man. <laughs> this is the book of James five and 17. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman, all right, Yahweh Shai, waited for the precious fruit of the earth, the bride, his wife, the church. All right, that's when we we're going to be entered into the new covenant, when we're at one with Yahweh Shai again on the chariots in the secret chambers. That's where a covenant takes place in a chamber, in a marriage chamber. The marriage chamber is the chariots, okay, where well, we're going to uh, uh, go and enter into that covenant, all right, with the husbandman, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, man. You see? And, and, and as we're in this grace period, we're preparing ourselves for the marriage of the Lamb, pursuant to the book of Revelation 19 and 7. So be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draw of nigh. You see that? All right. He have uh, uh, patience, you know, for the precious fruit of the earth. Okay. Let's read this. 
a matter of fact, we'll just go back to King James. And if we want to look up any uh, scripture in the uh, NLT, we'll do that. This is uh, 1 Kings 17 and 14. It says, For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal will not waste. Meaning you're going to have enough. You're going to have what you need to sustain you. Neither will the uh, the uh, cruise of oil fail until that day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So you're going to, hey, you, hey. <laughs> you see? And that latter rain, as we just read, you know, um, in this uh, James, the fifth chapter, is speaking of the gathering of the elect. So we're going to have exactly what we need. Okay? We're going to be in a time of trouble. Okay? As it's called Jacob's trouble. You know, and everybody's going to be you know, in, you know, whatever position the Lord has you. Okay, we don't know exactly, you know, uh, the, you know, as the scriptures say, we, we know in part and prophesy in part. I can't tell you exactly where we're going to be, you know, how, how it's going to be. You know, um, we don't know that, but we do, all right, have a sure word of prophecy that the elect are going to eat, uh, deliverance is coming, a destruction is coming, and so forth, man. You see, as a matter of fact, let's get the book of Habakkuk, chapter uh, three and 17. It says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. All right. And that's according to this world. See, in this world, Esau is going to put a system in place to where everything's going to fail. Everything's going to be shut down. All right. But the thing is, Esau ain't the end all be all food as Habakkuk is seeing a vision of how it's going to be in the end time before, you know, when the Lord returns, man. OK. And the, the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in Yahweh. I will joy in the God of my salvation. See. The elect are going to be rejoicing while all of these harsh things are happening in the planet Earth, man. See, although the uh, the the uh, the uh, farming is going to be cut off, the meat's going to be cut off. Esau is going to make it to where there's no way for you to, uh, you know, go and buy and sell without bound to him. Well, look, the Lord is going to put us in a position to be rejoicing. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet, like a deer. Very swift. All right. And that, that that family also goes into those goats. OK, who they're, they're they're on walls that are like just steep, a straight wall, steep going down. But the Lord makes their feet to to, to, to plant in a, in, a, in a way that they're not falling. See, he will make me to walk upon my upon my high places. OK, and the high places. <laughs> all right. Are the dangers. You see, that are coming, all right, with this devil system, all right? But the Lord is going to have us in a position, okay, to where we can't be, hey, we're going to be good. He's going to put make our feet like Heinz feet, okay? Let's read that in NLT. All right, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread up on the heights, just like those particular goats. All right. Um, you know, the, 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 they're able to just stand on a on a on a slope. All right. And be good. You know, particular animals that try to get them, they'll fall. But the 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 the, the uh, that particular row or goat or particular, you know, animal that the Lord gives these powers, <laughs> which these are forms of powers. Yeah, they're just sitting there safe. All right. So going back to uh, 1 Kings 17 and 14. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord send it rain upon the earth. All right. And at that point, you're going to be good. OK. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. You see that? <laughs> And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the course of oil fail 
according to the word of Yahweh, which he spake by Elijah. And are not we speaking these same things unto you? Are not we saying, all right, that, that, that the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha are going to eat? Salakia. These are the things we're telling you. All right. So as the prophets speak, so happens on the planet Earth, man. Let's get the book of, and you can read that whole chapter. Let's get the book of Psalms 111 and 4. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. Okay, and that's one of them, what we just read. Yahweh is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will never, all right, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. He's always going to remember that covenant. And in order for us, the elect to be entered into the covenant they're going to have to be beamed up they're going to have to be alive okay now we know again there are going to be some all right who are going to be raised up first because your works do follow you you see but they're going to be particular men and women on earth all right along with their children all right to be delivered as a matter of fact let's get the book of uh jeremiah 31 Jeremiah 31 7 For thus saith Yahweh Sing with gladness for Jacob And shout among the chief of the nations Publish ye, praise ye And say, O Yahweh, save thy people The remnant of Israel Behold, I will bring them from the north country And gather them from the coast of the earth And with them the blind and the lame the woman with child and her that travail it with child together, a great company shall return thither. So there's going to be women, all right, who are pregnant. There's going to be women giving birth. There's going to be the blind, the lame, all right, uh, that are going to be delivered. You see that? They shall come with weeping and with supplications, and I will lead them, and I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, all right, for I am the father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. There you go. So the heavenly father has already <laughs> foreordained that, you know, the, the particular men, you know, women, and even children, even children that are in the belly be delivered. As the scripture talks about that, there's going to be women saved in child, childbearing. Okay? So uh, there's a great thing coming unto us. You see, that's how we're going to enter into the new covenant via people, via people being changed and, 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 and brought into the image of Yahweh Bashim Shai. But they have to be, all right, a lot of people here on earth, the, the, a lot of the prophets and a lot of the, the, the large multitude that are going to be gathered from the different nations. So that means through all of this hell, the Heavenly Father already has provision Okay, as we just read here, Psalms uh, uh, 111 and 15 and 5, I mean, it says, He have given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. You see that? He have showed his people the power of his works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. We're going to we're going to have you heathen and, <laughs> you know, possess you, man. You see, but there you go. He have given meat unto them that fear him. Now, again, we talk about the anxiety that comes sometimes with what if you sit and think about what if and those those demons of doubt come. All right. But what did Yahweh Shai himself say to us? Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. All right. What you shall put on. Is not the life more meat, all right, than the body and raiment, all right? Meaning we have to be alive, all right, in order to preach, you see? Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Well, Esau is allowing people to have surgeries to become taller. <laughs> That's the world we live in. And why take ye thought for raiment? 
Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. All right. Wherefore, if the if the most high so clothe the grass of the field, which is uh, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you? O you, uh, O ye of little faith. See, the Lord didn't like people with little faith. See, and we have to come and approach the throne boldly through faith, man. You can't doubt. If you doubt, you're damned. Okay. Now we know in this flesh you go through, uh, uh, you know, points of weakness. You see. But we're here to to, to to comfort you and to let you know the Lord has provision for us, man. It's already laid out. There's various uh, stories in the Bible that go into that. Take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. All right. The, the, the you know, even our own people who are in the Gentile state of mind. Okay. That's their mindset. That's why they're going to bow the knee to the image of Baal. See? Because they're going to be, where? how I'm going to eat? Oh, man, what I'm going to do? How I'm going to buy? How I'm going to sell? I mean, I got to do what I got to do, man. Right? For your heavenly father know it that ye have need of all these things. See, he know you need to eat. He know you need to drink. Okay? And how in the hell you think the elect are going to be in position to, you know, be having you know, pregnant women, women giving birth? You know, uh, the, the people are going to have to be sustained. You can't do all of that while you're starving. All right. But seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take care. All right. Let's see here. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the, today is the evils thereof. And you got enough going on now. You worry about today. All right. The Lord will take care of tomorrow. Okay. The Lord will take care of the the times of Jacob's trouble when this devil comes down with great wrath and brings another siege. Okay, this is the book of Isaiah 63, 65 and 13, excuse me. All right. A terrible headache. It says, therefore, thus said the Lord God, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. See that? And this is speaking of the wicked two-thirds of our people remember we started the lesson out with the fact that these particular you know death and bloodshed strife swore calamities famine tribulation the scourge they the teeth of wild beasts these things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood see but the lord had provision for 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 uh noah all right which is you know the lord via noah's grace period because from the time noah got the vision and went out preaching until the time that rain came that was grace but the lord put the spirit on noah all right to uh, uh offer up the works of righteousness all right and therefore he was what justified but the lord had already foreordained that he was going to justify him you see so the elect are going to eat all right, but the wicked of our people, hey, they're gonna get the, the 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 you know all of those various different things we just read about, man. Okay, they're gonna catch hell. Okay, they're gonna be through. Okay, let's get some precepts here real quick. Psalms thirty-seven and nineteen: They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, shall be as the fat of the lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke they shall consume away. All right? They're going to be judged. Let's get this in the book of Psalms 34 and 4. 
I sought Yahweh and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were uh, lightened and their faces were not ashamed. See, and that's what the scriptures say that the remnant of Israel are going to do. They're going to no longer lean on Esau, Edom, who, who smote them, who destroyed their nation. They're going to lean on Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, man. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of Yahweh campeth around about them that fear him and he delivered them. You see that? As the scriptures say in Psalms 91, he's going to, his angels are going to keep the elect in the way. See that? Let's just get that. That's written. Psalms 91 and 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Okay. Let's see here. I just want to get to the point. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. All right. You don't think that comes with, 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 with giving you, putting you in situations to eat and drink as Esau has set up a, a system of famine? No, of, of, of course that, that, that comes with him keeping you in your way. It comes with keeping you in the mindset of preaching his truth and standing firm. All right, which is something that also must happen in order for the elect to be delivered. Somebody got to be telling Esau, hell nah, and speaking against this devil system. See, they shall bear thee up in thy, their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So the angels are going to be sent to protect the elect. And the angels are more powerful than Esau. Okay, food didn't don't don't go out just because this devil says you can't have it in this system or you got to do this. Hey, the food, the Lord could create food, and again, He could have a raven bring you some food, right? This is uh Psalms thirty four and eight. Oh, taste and see. That the uh, Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Okay. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. See that? You're going to have everything you need when you need it. Okay. He may test you, test you, all right, by, you know, uh, you know, and, and, and during that testing, he'll put the spirit on you to, to, to have a, the right spirit on you. <laughs> See, he'll, he'll put the spirit on you to be in the right spirit. OK, so it's all about just 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 leaning fully on your how about you shy, man. Because like, like literally we're getting ready to have to step out. And believe these things and, and, and actually walk. OK, in this way, like Elijah. Okay, like like hey, we're gonna have to go do this where the Lord put the spirit, you gotta go here, do this, do that. Who you don't know what's gonna happen. But to already, you know, to be of that number to where provision is already laid out for you. Whew. This is the book of uh Psalms thirty four and nine. Oh fear the Lord, all ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Yahweh shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of Yahweh. See? And, and, and that's what it starts with. Okay? And, and, and who wants to starve to death? Well, you, you got to fear the Lord. Okay, and you gotta you gotta mean it. Okay, you can't be a nigga. Again, stop being a nigga, man. Let's get the book of Hebrews thirteen. Niggas ain't gonna make it, man. Hebrews thirteen and five. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You see that? He said that. He said, I will be with you always into the end of the world. 
Okay. Uh, uh, what's that? Psalms 23. And one. All right. Yahweh is my shepherd. All right. Yahweh Bashim Shah because he sent Yahweh Shai to be our shepherd. See? He Yahweh Shai is the head of the church. All right. But it's through the authority of the most high God, Yahweh. Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall not want. See, I shall not want. Let's look up this word want. Chasar. All right. It says. Let's see here. To lack. To be without. To decrease. To be lacking. To have need. To diminish. To decrease. See that? So these are the things that are written in the volume of the book that we have to tap into. Okay. Uh, 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 Psalms 132. I start at 13. For the Yahweh have chosen Zion. He have desired it for his habitation. All right. He's going to fully dwell in us, man. Or as a man dwells in his wife, the Lord is going to dwell all right, in the elect via the Holy Spirit, man. Through Yahweh Shai. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Okay? I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. See that? <laughs> let's look up this word provision. As a matter of fact, let's read it uh, in the NLT. I will bless the city and make it prosperous. I will satisfy satisfy its poor with food. And aren't we the the, 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 the the poor of this earth? Rich in faith? Okay. Tazayad. Tazayad. Okay. Hunting game. Game hunted provision. Food. Provision. Food. Supply. See that? root word to hunt to hunt eagerly or keenly to take provision provision is usually uh sitting around all right you having food okay or you having water you being nourished you being in a position to where uh, you, you win all right and 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 and, and you ha you had no idea what's coming all right but we have to have faith that it's coming because it is coming Okay, this is the book of Psalm 68, 19. Blessed be the Lord who loadeth us with benefits daily, okay? Daily, who daily loadeth us with benefits. How much more in the time of trouble? You don't think he's going to give you what you need? Even the God of our salvation, all right, Selah, all right? And Selah is like the ancient way of, uh, you know, it's, it's like praise, but, uh, like Jake say, uh, after they say particular lyrics, you know, well, Selah, all right, which when you look that up, <laughs> hey, Jake ain't new to this, we true to this, and these are songs, okay, so, you know, today Jake, you know, have their little, you know, ad libs, well, this is what we used to say, Selah, to lift up, to exalt a technical music term probably showing all right a sin situation pause interrupt all right in between lines you get jake come with a huh or a yeah or whatever it is well and we we said say la see that let's look up this word though shit i'm like what the hell this mean and we 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 get a few more and close out but i just wanted to go into that Let's see here, technical. It says the action of emphasizing something. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the the premise of the thing, the manner in which accents are apparent and pronunciation. Boom. Okay. So if you ever seen Selah and you didn't know what it meant, that, that that's the, you know, that's the ancient ad lib. Okay. 
So he he loadeth us daily with benefits, man. Okay, the scriptures say every morning. Let's get that. Let's see, Lamentations 3, I believe. Let's see here. Or is it four? Yep, Lamentations 3 and 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Every morning. Okay, the provision is already laid out. Okay, a lot of days you leave out of the house. Right? You didn't know a lot of the stuff that was gonna uh, the, that happened to you was going to happen. But again, the Lord already has things laid out. Provision. Okay. Psalms 103 and 2 Blessed the Lord Yahweh, O my soul And forget not all his benefits Alright Psalms 116 and 12 What shall I render unto Yahweh For all his benefits towards me Okay So call halal Yahweh Bashim Yahushai 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always being, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Okay, let's read this in the NLT. And God will generously provide all you need, then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. There you go. So... <laughs> Call hello, Yahweh, uh, Bashim Yahushai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom.